deep in the swamps of Louisiana lives a Cajun wildcat, untamed and deadly as the swamps that spawned her, Desiree. Poaching gators are playing tag with the Louisiana law. Desiree roamed her land wild and free. Hey, Desiree! Hello, we're in the name of the law. This week we're going to be talking about the film Gator Bait. 1972. 1974? I've, heard, I've seen 73 and 74. I think huh. it was 74, though. Movies used to also uh, take a long time to get around. Sure. It was because there was release. only a couple of prints, so they'd, the prints would go from drive-in to drive-in. Right. So it could take a year or multiple years for the movie to even get to go to around you. the country, just around the country. And they would always go to like the Midwest and down south first mm. because they didn't want the movies to be reviewed by critics in New York and L.A. and for everyone to find out how bad they how are. How bad they were. Wow. <laughs> That's interesting. That's very interesting because then Jaws was seventy five, just to to get around that bad review thing. They just released a zillion prints all over the U.S. on that on like a weekend on like that Friday. Thus, you know, it didn't matter if they had bad reviews or not because everyone already saw the movie because they'd already made a lot of press about it and you know, really really amped it up with with advertising and 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 whatnot and so. Gator Bait was produced and directed by the married team of Beverly and Ferd Sebastian. Beverly wrote the screenplay. Uh, Ferd composed the music and was a cinematographer. Mm. And they had started out, they had like a photography company. Okay. They started making TV commercials. Yeah. And they eventually scaled up, uh, you know, started making features of exceedingly bigger budgets. Mm-hmm. They were making like porn in the 70s. Porn was also like a different thing in the 70s where the world of porn and features was like, Close, yeah, closer to the lines, right? Yeah. yeah, so they were making like, you know, uh, what they used to call like white coat movies, which were like porns where there's like a, a doctor and it's almost uh, framed as like an instructional. Okay. But it's, it's still basically for porn. Gator Bait stars Claudia Jennings, mm-hmm. whose birth name was Mary Elaine Chesterton. And she was uh, Playboy Magazine's Playmate of the Month for November 1969 and also Playmate of the Year for 1970. Wow. So she was pretty, uh, pretty well, famous in that world. Okay. And then once she aged out of being a playmate at the ripe old age of uh, 22, yeah. she uh, pursued a career in acting, and uh, yeah, she became known as the queen of B-movies. Okay. She, yeah. what, what else she been in? Oh, she'd been in lots of things. She was in uh, The Unholy Rollers, uh, mm-hmm. Truck Stop Women, The Single Girls. That was the movie that she met the Sebastians on. Okay. And basically the genesis for Gator Bait is that she asked Beverly Sebastian if she could write her a role where she didn't have to talk a lot. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, she died tragically in an automobile accident. Oh, no. When? Uh, 1979, when she was 29 years old. Yeah, she stars in this one as uh, Desiree Thibodeau, a Cajun alligator poacher who lives uh, deep in the swamps of Louisiana. Got her own theme song. Yeah, great theme song. Desiree. Which is also written by uh, Ferd Sebastian, the director and cinematographer and producer. Okay. He's this guy good. does it all. He's a talented whole, guy. Whole I think he's from Texas. Well, that explains it. I guess so. You know, big hats. Lots, big hats? Lots of them. Yeah, there's a Dukes of Hazard vibe going with the cops, for sure. But uh, this movie was shot on location in Louisiana. It has amazing cinematography, especially in the opening sequence with uh, Desiree sailing around, you know, catching snakes and shit. Mm -hmm. Claudia Jennings is looking amazing backlit by the sun. She's wearing like booty shorts and a a burlap sack fashioned into a shirt. (laughs) Yeah, it's uh, it's high fashion. Yeah. She's Ted Kaczynski's wet dream, a beautiful woman living off the land without relying on modern technology. Who uh, couldn't be allured by yeah such a f- fl- fl- swamp flower? Swamp flower? That's a that's a good term. <laughs> Is it? I was, I was searching for one for far too long. Yeah. Sorry about that. Pause there, y'all. So uh, in the first scene, there's these two goofy guys on a boat like eating cracker jacks. <laughs> it's a uh, Billy the sheriff's son and also a deputy, and his overall wearing pal Ben Bracken. Mm-hmm. The or- scenario, it's almost comical until you realize like what their plan is. How are we going to get her to lay down out of here and screw us in the middle of the swamp? She ain't got no choice. She either screws us 
or she gets behind bars. The deputy's plan is to catch Desiree in the act of poaching and use the threat of incarceration to coerce her into having sex with him and his, his slow friend. Basically gang rape. Yeah, out in the bayou. And gang he's... rape on the bayou. Yeah, it's it's pretty despicable. And, uh, uh, you know, that's that's kind of the setup for this film. Well, <laughs> what's even scumbags. more disturbing is there's a pro-rape message inside the Cracker Jacks box. Oh, yeah? What does yeah. it say? Do it before it's too late. If you look back too much, you should be heading in the wrong direction. <laughs> Damn, Jack, that fucking cracker. Right? Yeah. Fucking weird. Damn it. Initially, Ben is reluctant, right, to rape um, Desiree because he brings up that his brother Leroy also tried to assault her and she cut his balls off. Yeah, but he was stupid. Yeah. We ain't stupid. <laughs> we'll that see dude, how stupid that they That dude's are. performance is pretty great. The guy who plays uh, Billy. The uh, the cop? Yeah. The, the, the young cop there? Billy boy. So uh, Billy and Ben are scoping out Desiree's trap, and finally she shows up. You know, she's like scantily clad. Yeah. Uh, the chase is on. Pretty cool chase scene through the swamp. Yeah, just ripping around on these uh, on these swamp boats. Seemingly high speeds. I think they just like ripped around these swamps and just filmed doing some. <laughs> yeah, it looks pretty good. Fun. And you get a quick peek of Claudia Jennings' nipple at one point. Oh, yep. Yeah. The, the wind blows, blows pops the right out. Uh, one of my favorite lines is, uh, Pull out with a name in the law and drop your britches. So, uh, they trap Desiree and, uh, she tosses a bag of snakes into the boat, which is pretty funny. Smart. She was collecting them out the water earlier. Yeah. Might as well use them. Billy starts freaking out and shooting at the snakes, shooting holes in the boat, you know? What? It's pretty comical. A dumbass. Yeah. Like, Ben jumps into the water, putting him in, like, head level with the boat, and he catches a bullet, like, right between the eyes. It's quick. Yeah, it's kind of unfortunate because Ben was at least initially against the rape. He had to be coerced into it with uh, Cracker Jacks and a boat ride. <laughs> yes. Yeah, like, that's yeah. where it ends? That's that's it. Yeah, he's, he's out of there. Desiree is out of there. She throws the snakes in the, in the boat, <laughs> yeah. bounces. They're fucking, they're jumping around, going crazy. Ben catches a bullet in the head. Billy freaks out and fucking leaves him. Right. Pretty rude. Leaving mm-hmm. your friend after you shot him. So Billy runs back and tells his dad, the sheriff, about, you know, the whole thing. And the first thing uh, the sheriff does is scold him for bothering Desiree. But then when he tells him, you know, that uh, his new boat got sunk, he gets pretty pissed off. Uh, if my son took out the boat and then lost I mean, he wasn't even supposed to take it out in the first place. So if he goes out harassing people that I told him not to and then the boat's gone, like... Of course you're gonna be upset. I mean, be, someone being shot—that's that sucks too. But yeah, the boat, man. Yeah, yeah. So now uh, the sheriff and uh, Billy have to go tell Ben Bracken's family, you know what happened. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's probably got to be a hard part. Or at of least what account. Billy is saying happened because Billy's lying to his right. dad and he's got and telling him that Desiree shot Ben. Not that you know they were trying to rape Desiree. Right. That they went out there with the intention of raping, but then ended up. Kill, shooting uh, up his friend and uh, sinking the boat. Yeah, yeah. Kind of, you know, he gets what he deserves. Yeah, Billy's not a good guy. Yeah, this whole uh, this whole rape thing really uh, it's really prevalent throughout the throughout the film. You know, uh, our, our fast our our last film, uh, Frogtown. Also about rape. Yeah, you can tell when it's a, a film that Russ chose when it has amphibians and rape in it. Oh, can't get enough of it. Yeah. Rip it. Those uh, are just Russ's two main interests. So when they when they cross, when, when they the Venn diagram of, of uh you know reptiles and sexual assault, like that that slim margin where films meet, mm-hmm. that's Russ's niche. That's what I meant. Yeah. I mean what <laughs> He's the leading academic in America on rape reptile films. There's this one, The Frogs. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the 1987 classic Gator Rape, which he was a he was a, a, a technology consultant on. Mm-hmm. I yeah. made sure that all the Gator Rape looked scientifically <laughs> accurate. Yeah. Uh, okay, so the next scene is another attempted rape. This time, Ben Bracken's brother Pete is trying to rape his sister. 
Well, she seems kind of into it, right? She's no, against no. it. He throws her into the mud and she's screaming and flailing. It's pretty uncomfortable. And then the patriarch uh, of the family, TJ Bracken, played by Sam Gilman, he shows up and he starts whipping the shit out of the kid. Probably one of the strongest actors in the film. Yeah. I think him and him and the uh, the dad cop there uh, both are pretty pretty decent. So he gets his bull whip and he just starts whipping the hell out yeah, of his son. Yeah, the shit out of the kid. Which makes, you know, yeah. It breaks the tension teeth. and like uh, gives you some catharsis. Uh, because you get to see, you know, the would-be rapist get beat. But it does not paint a flattering uh, portrayal of people from Louisiana. For sure not. Anyways, uh, the whipping is interrupted by uh, TJ's other son, Leroy. This is the guy who got his uh, his testicles cut off by Desiree. Yes. So uh, Leroy alerts TJ that the sheriff and his son are approaching. And the next scene, uh, TJ and Leroy meet the sheriff. And it's kind of funny because Leroy just walks right up to the sheriff and like spits at him. <laughs> It's almost like comical, like the timing of it. <laughs> is he just spitting? Uh... Yeah, the sheriff just like ignores it. <laughs> uh, well, good. I mean, what are you going to start fighting a, a guy and his sons on the on the property? Huh. Well, Lee Leroy is a bit edgy. He's he lost his balls. balls. What you do know? you got to lose after that, dude? It doesn't seem like a pleasant guy. Like, how you doing today, Mister Bracken? How do you think I'm doing? It hurts where my testicles used to be. Can you, do you think you can feel him, like, shrinking and growing, but, like, phantomly? Who knows? Like, when the weather gets dry, his fucking, his nut scar might hurt. Yeah. Hey. Might be, like, arthritis. Like, when it rains, he might get, like, pains in his fucking, you know, where his, his nuts, nuts used like to his exist. empty nut sack or whatever the fuck it is. <laughs> you think she cut them out and he just left the, left the flap of skin? Just a flap of, it's, like, it's pretty yeah. rude. You it's know? Like, that's almost the worst case scenario. Doesn't seem pleasant. No. Flap sacks, you're going to be tripping on it. You know, it's just going to be stick. It's going to stick to your leg even far more. Yeah. You're like tied up like a ponytail or something. At that point. Yeah. 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 Anyways, the sheriff tells TJ that his son Ben was shot and killed by Desiree and he does not take it well. Damn! And then the next scene, uh, you know, TJ Bracken is in a boat with his rapist son and his dickless rapist son trying to find his dead rapist son. Russ, these Bracken boys, if they ain't raping, they're probably dead or castrated. You know what yeah, I mean? Uh, I do know what you God mean. Goddamn, if them Bracken boys ain't out there raping again. If them Bracken boys ain't raping, I'd be a goddamn gator's uncle. I, and I sure as fuck ain't got no green dick. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so uh, when the Brackens and the cops are traveling into the swamp, mm -hmm. the movie gives like some exposition through voiceover. That plays like a flashback. So basically, the sheriff let Desiree off after she castrated Leroy because he was trying to rape her. You know, if, he, if he prosecuted her for cutting his balls off, he would also have to prosecute Leroy for attempted rape. Right. That's Bayou law. Right. In the Bayou, if someone tries to take the pussy, you could take their dick. A dick for a pussy. That's or, or I guess a, a dick for a dick. And a pussy for a pussy? Like the Bible? But anyways, the castration explains uh, Leroy's nasty attitude and him spitting on the sheriff and the sheriff just taking it because he knows this guy lost his balls. And, you know, the sheriff didn't prosecute the woman responsible for the ball cutting because it was self-defense, you know. And if that man had balls, he would have raped her. So she removed the balls, therefore solving the problem. You know what I mean? Fix the issue. It's pretty logical. Taking law in her own hands. I would say surgical almost. Yeah. She should be, have a, a doctorate. But if anyone has the right to be pissy, it's the guy who lost his balls, you know? No, he he asked for that by attempting uh, a sexual assault. Yeah. So. It's funny stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Just fun, light stuff. Yeah, you know. You know, this guy is trying to rape. He gets his fucking balls cut off. Desiree, she cuts his balls Can't off. Catch a rapist by the eye. Cut his balls off. Don't let him die. Desiree. <laughs> so uh, they find Ben Bracken's body, and that sets off TJ even more. Mm. And then they come on to, uh, they come across Desiree's shack, but she's left on a long poaching trip. So instead, they terrorize her little brother and her sister. Right. She has a, a little brother and sister out there. So they live in the swamps and, uh, you know, they yeah. they have fun. 
He might be simple. But we yeah, well, the brother know. has no tongue, and I, I'm not well, sure what the backstory on this is, and I don't think the movie ever explains it. Mm-hmm. It's a pretty rare and like unique injury that you think would warrant like an explanation. Maybe the kid playing the part was just a bad actor like Claudia, so they decided <laughs> to have him play it as a mute. Or maybe, right, he was trying to eat out his hot sisters, oh. and Desiree had to cut his tongue off like Leroy's cock. Oh, there you go. Thus solving the problem. Yeah. Yeah, those... Uh... I mean, uh, these people in Louisiana, they do seem they, to like incest. They love the incest. You know, yeah. that's that was the joke, but it's not a joke in this movie. That's that's the reality of this movie. Yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, incest is really funny until your ball's deep in your sister and the joke's over. Yeah, and it's just hot. Yeah, exactly. Um, and then, you know, you got a weird brother. Yeah, her weird mute brother, who I think is played by the Sebastian's daughter. I think it's... Their daughter plays the uh, little boy. Really? Which, you know, because it's a little boy, a little girl. You can't really tell the difference. You can't tell. It, look, it looks like a little boy. Maybe that's why they don't have him talk, because he would sound like a girl. That Yeah, that could be it, right? Uh, but yeah, they love shooting shotguns at cans out in the thing. And yeah, but they have a nice little montage. Putting like leeches out. in his pants and doing all sorts of weird yeah, shit. Yeah. Swamp shit, you know? Yeah. Stomping in mud. and They're doing fun little boy stuff with them. Freaking crawdads. <laughs> Playing with frogs and shit. Must be nice living in the swamp. You Would you want to live in the swamp, Gary? No. I would oh, yeah. not want to live in the swamp. Didn't seem fun? Putting crawdads in your butthole? No, I would not want a crawdad little, in my butthole. The little, little claws all like... <laughs> that, sounds, uh, that sounds terrible. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah, terrible. Yeah, yeah, yeah you're probably terrible. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, like I said, Russ really <laughs> likes amphibians and rape. Uh, they're, yeah. <laughs> this is kind of his thing. So uh, Desiree's little sister is left around with uh, Leroy, which is pretty uncomfortable. Right. First, it looks like she's like making him pancakes. And he's like being menacing with the, with the Bowie knife, like rubbing it up her nighty. This was after the three minute scene of where a guy shits. And we like zoom in on his on his face and he like. Really, I don't even remember that. Explain. That's where. Uh, that's actually how they how they get the sister, right? They uh, he, one guy gets out. Of yeah, Pete is out shitting. He's got to yeah. go take a shit, and he he's finds like, her like she's out there bathing s- naked. Super long shot of like this guy, and then he like gets down, and then it's like at least twenty more seconds on him on his face while he yeah. like tries to squeeze out a a nice duper. Uh, meanwhile, this chick, yeah, naked. Uh and yeah, so anyway, back to where we were. They get her, they capture her, the whole family. Yeah, so uh, Leroy has her alone, right? And she's making him pancakes, and he's, he's menacing her with the Bowie knife. Which, uh, you know, there's nothing scarier than a horny man without a penis. Oh, he's got a penis, right? He has a penis, but he doesn't have balls. So you can't get hard so it's no i don't know i mean i'm assuming i feel like there's still the threat of of, of, well he can't rape right as though he was he they neutralized his raping ability that was the whole point you don't get hard if you don't have balls i don't think so man if he got if if she cut off his balls and he could still get hard he would have raped her yeah i I don't know if you're bleeding that much from your from your genitalia i think she knows what she's doing she's been avoiding rape for you know on the bayou forever yeah 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 um stories but, uh, you know, it's kind of like the impotent serial killer, Andre Chikatilo. Mm. He would, like, knife fuck, uh, you know, women. Horrifying. Yeah. Hey, you know, uh, you can't get off. Uh, well, like I said, I got to let you choose some pay. of the films. So, you know, <laughs> yeah. if I got to put up with it. Well, it would be unfair for me to make every. Well, in the next one we watch will be nice and have considerably less rape and less yeah. less amphibians. <laughs> Yeah, the girl, cold-blooded creatures. Yeah, the girl playing Desiree's sister has a uh, really great breasts and very authentic armpit hair. I was thinking it'd be funny if you just started like uh, taking off her armpit hair with a knife, <laughs> shaving it slowly. Just put her on, get get that out of here, and he starts like you know shaving her armpits. He's into it. Is it because she's a swamp woman, or did women just not shave their armpits in the seventies? It's a it's a French thing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so then Pete and Billy come in. Uh, and they're going to assault her. And just when you think it can't get any more grim, uh, Leroy pulls them off 
and executes her with a uh, shotgun to the genitals. Yeah. It's pretty disturbing. It's It was pretty horrifying. It's kind of out of nowhere and um, definitely unexpected. I mean, uh, more castration, right? He's doing unto others what's been done to him, but uh, he enjoys it. Yeah, well, he's using a shotgun as a surrogate for his penis, and he's uh, literally blowing her back out. Gross. <laughs> <laughs> So TJ and the sheriff are arguing over the whole thing. They have some sort of arrangement where, like, uh, the sheriff, Joe Bob, lets the Brackens poach gators. Mm -hmm. I guess poaching gators is illegal, and they're supposed to arrest people for it. Yeah, poaching sounds illegal. Yeah. But the sheriff looks the other way for the Brackens as well as for Desiree and her family. So the real tragedy in all this is all these gators that are getting killed so that these white trash people can go around raping and castrating each other. So, um, you know, they let Desiree's uh, little brother go and he finds her like skinning a squirrel or something, which is kind of confusing because she's supposed to be on like this trip where she's like days away. Yeah, she took a boat. She was like, I got to go way far away. And then all of a sudden he's like, hey, I'm glad I found you in the middle of the swamp. Yeah. She, he like runs like, what, 15 minutes and <laughs> finds her or some shit. She took the long way around. Yeah. So uh, meanwhile, Billy confesses to his father, Joe Bob, that he was the one who shot Ben, not Desiree. Mm -hmm. And at this point, Desiree comes back. Yeah, and she uses moonshine to sabotage one of their boats with a pretty robust explosion. Yeah, it's it's pretty beefy. Yeah. And when she finally gets to her little uh, Unabomber shack, she finds her sister dead and gives a possibly the most unconvincing scream of grief I've ever seen. And that's what gives her away, and they realize that she's at the house. It's a, it's a. But her acting is fucking terrible. It's a Cajun scream. <laughs> you know, <clears throat> I know this is a you feminist can't... film, but Claudia Jennings is better seen, not heard. So in this, uh, in the next sequence, they burn down Desiree's house, which is like edited really weird. They see her, but they never, like, chase after her. So it looks like she just, like, escapes by, like, walking 10 feet away from the house. There she goes! Ah! There she goes! Yeah. And then they just ignore her while they burn down her house. But it looks like she's, like, standing very close by. Yeah, just watching it happen. Yeah, it's, it's really like, edited it's like this weird. long lens. Yeah. I mean, they shot it in 10 days, Gary, you know? Yeah. And, uh, you know, it's a pretty good movie overall, so... I'm not going to get too hung up on weird editing from a movie from 1974. It's filmed in a swamp. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But this is like the turning point in the film, mm -hmm. you know, where the hunted becomes the hunter, or in this case, the huntress. And uh, the next day, Desiree lures the guys into a chase. And it's, you know, TJ, Joe Bob, Leroy, Pete and Billy all overloaded into one boat after she, you know, destroyed one of their boats. And she's just fucking driving laps around them. It's too bad uh, Claudia Jennings wasn't as quick behind the wheel of a car. Oh, wow. <laughs> because she died tragically in a car accident on the PCH. Right, yeah, no, I, I get that. But if she, yeah. <laughs> Is that what you look for, Gary? What's that? <laughs> yeah, horrible. Yeah. <laughs> horrible, tasteless. I definitely didn't mention that she died in a car accident earlier so I could make that joke. Yeah, yeah. Well, uh, nice setup. Paid off. <laughs> yeah, I hope so. Yeah, but Some, she's, somebody out there is giving a little golf clap. They're like, "Oh, he made fun of that lady who died in the car. She died in a fiery death." Uh, they don't make them like they used to. Don't make cars. Yeah, cars definitely don't go up in flames like they used to, folks. With all the newfangled safety, you got you put a twenty nine year old, uh, you know, uh, soft court porn chick in a, a modern car. You can hit that thing with a truck; should be fine. Should be fine. But you put her in one of those fucking Volkswagen Beetles. Okay. That thing's folding up like a, a tuna can. Yeah. Speaking of tuna can, she uh, she's inside of some, something about like you know pussy in the car is like a tuna in the can. Ooh. Take it from there, Russ. Uh, do I gotta? <laughs> <laughs> um, uh -oh. Real Cajun, real <laughs> Cajun cooking. Yeah, yeah. Uh, let's see here. Yeah, so this is the, like I said, this is the turning point where she's chasing them. Mm. Um, TJ, so they're they're doomed. Yeah. They're fucked. She knows the swamp. Do you see how fast? Yeah, she dude. She's uh, born in the in the bayou. Yeah. Rape in the bayou. 
So uh, TJ forces the two cops and his son Leroy into the swamp at gunpoint so he could like lose enough weight to chase after Desiree. And she uh, tricks him into following her into a little enclosure where she set a trap and she like shoots a rope causing a tree to fall while she gets away. And then she like uh, blasts through the swamp past all the guys in the water, just, you know, fucking firing off at the shotgun. She doesn't actually hit anyone. Terrible shot. Yeah. But she looks cool racking the gun and blowing off like slugs or rock salt or whatever. Yeah. She probably should have tried to shoot one of them, but it just seems like she's trying to toy with them. Yeah, so no damage which, done. Which is weird because they brutally murdered her sister. And Well, at this like, point, you want to the... see these guys get it. Yeah, exactly. You want to see them like, get shot. At that point, I, I, I probably, as Desiree, I would have probably shot one of them at least. Yeah. So next, there's a camp scene where uh, TJ basically tells the whole gang that Joe Bob, the sheriff, got caught with Desiree's mom. And her dad found them, and as a result, murdered her mother and fed her to the gators. Then the sheriff shot Desiree's father, killing him while little Desiree was watching. And, uh, you know, TJ Bracken knows about it, and he uses it as leverage on the sheriff so that he can get away with uh, poaching and doing whatever illegal shit that he's doing. Right. That's their backdoor deal. Yeah. So as this movie goes on, it's like revealing more and more backstory about how all these characters are kind of connected in their history. Small town stuff, you know? And then uh, things get heated between uh, the sheriff, TJ, and Pete. and uh, Or the sheriff and TJ. And Pete is still going on about trying to have sex with Desiree. Yeah. He's really can't, still... He can't, he can't let that. go of the rape fantasy. Like, he, he still thinks, you know, it's going to work out for gonna him. It's going to work. He's got to have it. Yeah. Anyways, uh, he saw her in Playboy a couple years back, and he just can't get over it. Yeah, he's got her hung on his it. wall, and she looks like his sister. So um, Desiree finds their camp in the morning while they're all like sleeping, and at this point, you're really hoping she's gonna like castrate everyone, maybe even like double castrate Leroy, because he's already uh, sans testicles. You know, she should castrate everyone else, sew all their testicles to him. So he's yeah, got, like. 15 balls. She so has like eight balls. She kind of reminds me of Jamie Lee Curtis, except Claudia Jennings cuts cocks off. She didn't have her cock cut off. <laughs> True lies right there, everybody. <laughs> yeah. But she doesn't take their penises. Instead, no. she just uh, takes their food and water. And uh, they all wake kind up. To- dooming them. You know, they're in the middle of a swamp. You can't drink that water. It's just yeah. Like- Mud leeches and oh, Jesus. Yeah, they're fucked. Yeah, totally doomed. Yeah. So uh, everyone wakes up uh, to find not only are all their supplies gone, but Leroy tells his dad that Pete left after Desiree. So now there's another rift in the brackens because uh, TJ threatens to whip Leroy for letting his brother go, and Leroy threatens his dad with the gun. So the whole team is like at each other's throats. Right. They're Probably. not in a good position to defend themselves. Against Desiree. Who's got the upper hand at this point. Yeah. She's coming. So uh, Desiree catches Pete with quite possibly the most unconvincing kick I've ever seen. I'm no professional martial artist, but I I think I can confidently say that that kick was bullshit. And if that was her best defense against rape, she'd probably be in a lot of trouble right about now. Well, she's still in a lot of trouble. Well, luckily, ace in the hole. She has her mute brother with a rifle and her testicle cutting knife. Maybe not very good at kicking, but we know from what happened with Leroy, she's pretty good uh, with a knife. knife. Yeah. The sheriff, TJ and Leroy, find Pete, and he's just like bruised up and covered in snakes. I guess she used like snakes to kill him, but they didn't show it. It was As you would. If you you can get snakes easy. It kind of comes out of nowhere. Yeah. You know, it is kind of a bummer to have an off-screen death, but... um, you got to cut corner somewhere. Yeah. So uh, now it's down to four. It's uh, TJ, Leroy, the sheriff, Joe Bob, and his son, Billy Boy. And uh, Desiree just emerges with the rifle, just fucking missing everyone. Yeah, terrible shot again. Yeah. Like, I know she's dumb, but is she blind too? Probably. Gotta be. She finally gets Billy Bob, though. Probably because he's like fucking five feet away. That's those old guns, Gary. We'll blame those old guns. Sure. She's got, it's full of mud. 
been kept in the swamp. She probably like cuts up food with it, you know, so it's all beat up. But it's pretty satisfying when she blasts uh, Billy in the back. So she checks him and he's not dead, but she doesn't kill him. Desiree's plan isn't to kill them. It's to fuck them up and then leave them for the gators like they did her and her mother. Mm. Thus, you know, the title Gator Bait. Gator Bait. Yeah. Uh, full circle there. Yeah. So uh, Leroy and the sheriff get into a confrontation over uh, taking Billy Bob back in the boat. Leroy relents and he picks up Billy and the sheriff insists on walking behind them with his gun. So things are pretty tense. Yeah. Pretty well acted scene. Yeah. Everything's kind of falling apart for the guys. And then that night Desiree sneaks up on the camp while they're sleeping and uh, deflates their boat, leaving them stranded. And then they're, they're fucked. They're up uh shit's Creek without a uh, boat. Oh, without a boat. Yeah. I mean, I think, it seems like you can walk through parts of the swamp. They a couple times they do jump out of the boat. It like goes up to their knees. One time it goes up to their like you know past their their nipples. Yeah, it's gonna take them forever to get out of there. Oh yeah, and who knows what's underneath there? And the gators. Know, there's gators. The boy are gonna get eaten by them dead gators. gators. You get you get dragged down to the bottom, and then the gator he rapes you. You get gator raped. And spin spun around. Yeah, the, once cycle. once the gator spin you around and gets you on your belly, boy, <laughs> that's when he gonna take you down and get you down there gator raping. Oh, uh, yeah. And then the next day, uh, Joe, Bob, and Leroy get into it again about. You know, this time about carrying Billy Bob out of the swamp, which like, I find it hard to believe that Billy Bob is still alive with that gunshot wound. Right. It's pretty bad. Um, but whatever. It, I mean, it's a shotgun, right? Or was it a rifle? I think it was a rifle. Oh. It's hard to say because it feels like sometimes she's using a rifle and sometimes she has a shotgun. It's right. kind of uh, inconsistent. So uh, Joe Bob spills that Billy killed Ben, which like seems like a bad time considering Billy now has to depend on you know <laughs> everybody ben's father for his life yeah poor decision but yeah pretty they, dumb you know no one's saying that people in this movie are smart yeah so uh tj pulls his pistol but then he just tosses it and he attacks the sheriff with his bare hands and honestly like the sheriff does better than you think he's, he's like fat guy tough right he can take the hits yeah, he can fight. Yeah, he's, they go at it for a little bit a little... but eventually tj just gets him in the water and drowns him like a big fat piggy well, his well, his, well, his ba- well, his little boy balls like a baby. Yeah, and Desiree's just watching, and Billy's all fucked up, crying. Where's my daddy? Where's my daddy? I mean, it's pretty intense scene. Yeah, and there's like a gator fucking uh, stalking around, jerking its dick. Yeah, dude. Desiree's Licking revenge is like more of a slow burn. It's not like as brutal. As like Day of the Woman or Thriller or some of the, the similar 70s like female revenge movies. Sure. You know? Not going around. Just She's more like blasting. calculating and, you know. Putting them at each other's necks and, you know, making them suffer the long haul in the swamp. Yeah. Because she can survive out there. They can't. So that's really what she's playing on. Sort of the environment and each other to kill each other. Um, While well, she also plants seeds of, you know. Of, 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 well, she does come in and shoot people. Yeah. Well, they're all sick fucks. So, you yeah, know, all no. their personalities, and they, they're forced to be in this situation, they're going to go at each other's throats, right? Or each other's butts. Yeah, going right at each other's butts. Turns into deliverance. So Desiree tries to catch Leroy with a trap, but he, uh, he avoids it and he grabs her. And it looks pretty bad uh, for Desiree. He has her, like, at knife point. Again, we've established he can't really do nothing, but he gets off on murdering well that's what's strange about this scene he just like he throws the knife and he starts like just kissing her aggressively i guess because like he doesn't have a dick so he's just like doing like super aggressive foreplay <laughs> so he's like kissing her with like gritted teeth and yelling like you fucking bitch i'm gonna fucking i'm gonna snuggle the fucking mm. shit out of you I'm gonna be so cuddled yeah i'm gonna give you a foot massage like you never fucking felt and then like leroy gets her at like gunpoint he's got like the gun to her neck and her little brother pops up with a rifle, and he blasts Leroy in the chest. Yeah, nice squib work. Yeah. I was actually hoping it'd be a little more climactic, because this has kind of been the bad guy of the movie. We established that he got his balls copped out at the beginning. He's always had a beef with her because he's tried to uh, you know, attack her before, and finally here's his chance, and yeah, he gets shot. 
Yeah, as but, far as seventy four goes, like that squib is pretty good. Like, uh, you know what I mean? It's not like you were gonna. It's not like it's the eighties and you're gonna see like a huge right. exaggerated like his Hold head gets blown off right, or right. some shit. So uh, now TJ's all alone, wandering around the swamp with his fucking whip, like some sort of weird like a uh, Creole lion tamer <laughs> or some shit. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Desiree catches TJ and her brother joins her. So now they got like fucking two guns on TJ. And Desiree tells him in her fucking monosyllabic cavewoman talk, you know. You see Leroy no more. He not come. Leroy fucked. Me fuck Leroy ass. And me fuck his empty ball pouch. Me use his <laughs> dick as toothpick. You know, he's, he's done. Your, your kid's fucking dead. So TJ asks her to kill him because, you know. Uh, he's he's just fucking over it. Yeah, his his all his sons, all his rapist sons are dead. Yeah. So, what is there to live? For? I mean, he can't even have grandkids now at this point. Yeah. Which I mean, that even if T, even if Leroy was alive, he couldn't have grandkids. Really, it ended for him when uh, Pete got killed. Well, he's got a, he's got the daughter. Well, he could have still. grandkids if he fucks his daughter. Yeah, you're, <laughs> yeah. you're correct, Russ. Yeah. He could be his own brother. Yeah, yeah. He can make that happen because it's Louisiana. Son, son, how does that work? Yeah. yeah. They'll figure it out. And uh, just before uh, Desiree leaves, he tells her he's her real father. Which is a lie, right? I don't know. So now him and the sheriff uh, were all involved with Desiree's mom simultaneously. Desiree's mom sounds like real fucking swamp trash. Yeah, She was just, fucking just, everybody. Well, when the sh- when everybody and the sheriff come well, around. They could have raped her, too. Yeah, everyone, fuck knows what everyone's happened. trying to have sex with any pretty woman because the whole time teaches like, yeah, it looks just like her mom. But it's know? weird because like, so you're going to let your, you're going to kill your daughter and let your, your sons rape your daughter. And then when he tells her, it's almost like, hi, I'm your pa. Like, I see after all of this. Like, <laughs> it's, it's like a weird tone to it. It just right. feels very. It, it feels fake. He doesn't yeah. act. You don't think he's actually. Her father, you think that's that's what? No, that I think is? he's. I think he is her father. I just think the movie's bad. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, just script script holes. Yeah, yeah, just you know, plot's not great. It's 1974. Claudia Jennings' performance not good, but it still works because they wrote it around her being a terrible actress. Yeah, she's a weird swamp woman. So if she, you know, doesn't have the right emotions that's fine because she's from the swamp she doesn't she can't talk right yeah she's from she the never swamp. went to school so she he never learned language she's good about at riding around catching snakes you know poaching gators yeah and escaping the law and who what other ever man is you know scrounging around the uh the swamp for sex yeah and like you know besides uh jennings the movie has pretty good performances for early 70s exploitation film Sam Gilman is good as, as TJ. And then the guy who plays uh, Billy Bob was pretty great. The sheriff. Yeah, the sheriff's son. I oh, thought he was yeah. a, a standout. Sure. Goofball sort of character. Clyde Ventura, that's the guy. He's like the crybaby rapist. Yeah. So, oh, no, Daddy, I was trying to rape her, and she sunk your boat, and she killed Ben, and I didn't even get to come. That's a uh, it's a damn shame. Yeah, you know, story of uh, story of your life. I don't know. <laughs> uh, I, you know, I think this movie is like a good choice if you want to watch one of these like uh, '70s feminist female revenge movies, and you don't really want to watch something as brutal as like Day of the Woman, which is probably the more well known of the two. Is that with the eye patch woman lady? No, that's Thriller. Okay, a cool picture. But yeah, it's another one that's like kind of brutal. And also, like, very pornographic. So if you want to, like, dip your toe in, uh, maybe gator bait yeah. is a good... Dip your toe in the swamp. There? Yeah. You see that? That's nice. A little yeah. bit of swamp humor. <laughs> yeah. This is also, like, one of the big 70s redneck rape movies. The other one being Deliverance, which is, like, bigger budget with, like, bigger names. And also a lot funnier because in that one, uh, Fat Ned Beatty is the one who they want to rape. Oh, that is funny. I thought it was Burt. Nah, Burt Reynolds. He has got a no rape uh, clause in his contract. <laughs> he only gets raped on set behind the camera. Ah, I see. Yeah, that's also written into the contract. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> nah, see, yeah, yeah, I'll be on it, but <laughs> director's got to rail me. Yeah. Um. <clears throat> yeah, Gator Bait. I give it. Uh, I give it two De Niro's. Oh, only two De Niro's. I'll give it at least three De Niro's. Three I think years, this is, this is a good road. one. You I'm know almost what? tempted to give it four to You know what? 
I'll for bring, what it is, it's really good. I'll bring it up at De Niro because, yeah. Well, yeah, I think I think uh, despite we'll do three between the two of us. Sure. Yeah. Because uh, you know there was decent performances. Uh, you know, decent performances, said. pretty good script, well shot, well made, uh, great music. Yeah, considering bu- it, it means budget. Claudia Jennings, Swamp, uh, in booty shorts. Yeah, you know it's pretty good. Yeah, could yeah, yeah. There you go, hater bait. And uh, you know, unfortunately, Claudia Jennings passed away before they could do a sequel. They did, though. The Sebastians did make a sequel to Gator Bait in 88. Uh, Gator Bait 2, Cajun Justice. Yeah. With another actress. I forget who stars in it. Starring Steven Seagal? Yeah, Steven Seagal <laughs> as uh, Desiree Thibodeau. Uh, you know, hey. a sexually independent poacher. Uh, uh, I'd watch it. Yeah, yeah, I'd watch it, too. But, uh, yeah, the second one I haven't seen, but... Uh, I think it was. It became like a big uh, cable TV, like a late night movie. Okay. And uh, yeah, looks dealt like with so. similar themes. Do you know? I don't know. I'm assuming it's probably pretty similar. I mean, that's what you want. A it's sequel. it's you 14 years later though. It's the late 80s, so I don't know how much of a uh, you know. It's maybe it's more. It feels more like a slasher or something. Mm. I'm assuming it probably reflects the time somewhat. But I've never seen it, so that could be one for the list. Gator Bait Two. Cajun Justice. Cajun Justice. And I think the Sebastians are pretty interesting as far as filmmakers go. It's like married couple where they're both directing and producing. Uh, the wife is the writer um, and the husband is the cinematographer and he's also doing the music. Mm-hmm. And they were very successful. They really they scaled this business up. It also shows how small the film industry was back then and how you could really just like scale up to doing big things. If you had the money. There's a lot of opportunity yeah. when there was less movies. Right. When you look at the list of movies that came out in 1974, it's uh, pretty small. Compared to today. Yeah, yeah. So if you could shoot something on 35 millimeter and it was a feature film, you probably, you probably could get, get it in a somewhere. theater somewhere, yeah. <laughs> yeah wow. this, this is a good one. I think it's a good example of the genre and of a movie like this. And uh, yeah, R.I.P. Uh, Claudia Jennings. I wonder if uh, Hugh Hefner made her do weird stuff with animals. As you think that's why uh, Hugh Hefner did like the Playboy Bunny thing? It's because he was into having sex with animals. Bunnies, yeah, they are soft. Yeah, they do like eat their own poop too. So that's kind of hot. Yeah, you think he made the playmates eat their own shit? <laughs> but they only like the really hard ones. But only like little pellet shits. Yeah, because yeah. all he fed them was like you know carrots and and brown hay. rice. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, brown rice and vegetables. Little Playboy Bunny turds on the lawn. <laughs> Oh, what a sick fuck. Yeah. Good old Hugh. Good old Hugh Hefner. Um, a um a uh, important figure in the civil rights movement and an important figure in the uh zoophilia movement. So hey, the the grays in which we exist. That we're all not we're not all good or all oh, bad. Yeah, sure. It's all a matter of perspective. We can en- encapsulate uh a dynamic Right? Uh huh. We could do good things and bad things. That's true. You heard it here, that's, guys. That's a good message. Like Russ said, uh, we can't we can't hate on Hugh Hefner for uh, his romantic relationship with animals. Did I say that? <laughs> Did you put a word on? I don't know. I'm sorry, buddy. <laughs> no, it's all good. It's fun to tease for us. Yeah, yeah. You know. Yeah, no. Welcome to high this is school. all in jest. This is a, a comedy podcast. We don't have sex with animals. We've never had sex with animals. Never had sex with an animal. Yeah. I mean, unless you count all those animals I had sex <laughs> with. <laughs> I don't know where you're going to go with that. <laughs> yeah. I thought you were going to be like, unless you count me as an animal. Oh, yeah. You know what I mean? Rawr. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like a cat noise, like Austin Powers. We've talked about Austin Powers in almost every episode, so we should probably keep that going. Yeah, baby. <laughs> yeah, baby. Oh, behave. Look at this this big fat man. He's going to have sex with you and you could put stuff in his butt. I once ate a baby yeah. and I like when people drink my shit. <laughs> That's yeah. a joke in the movie. Yeah. Yeah. Um, all right. Till next time. Austin yeah, Powers. I think that'll do. All right. Later, folks. All right. Adios.